Um, okay, so let's talk about uh, – how about we talk about uh, Only Lovers Left Alive? Sure. I'm curious about this one. So uh, who wants to start? I think I, I've been trying to figure out a way of describing this movie, and I'm at a loss. Okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, so I, I – for me, uh, I mean this film is about uh, two – aging hipster vampires who have been together uh, for centuries. One of them is played by Tom Hiddleston, who's a musician, and the other is played by uh, Tilda Swinton, who is, uh, I don't know what you'd call her, but she's in love huh. with culture. Uh, yeah, and she likes, you know, literature and, you know, the the, the sort of dying arts, I guess, yeah, in, so in a sense. Yeah, so very well read. Uh, I guess you should be after being alive for centuries, <laughs> right. maybe. Um but she's based in Tangier, and Tom Hiddleston is in uh, Detroit, Detroit uh, where, yeah. you know, everything's kind of crumbling around. Um, but I think it's a perfect place for a vampire to hang out. Yeah. Um, and Tom Hiddleston is—he uh, creates music. He creates uh, music that all the young hipsters love, uh, and he's always uh, being um, berated, if you will, by hipsters who want to f- meet him and and you know you know, get his music and, and maybe even bootleg his music. And, and so, uh, but he, Hiddleston doesn't want anything to do with the, uh, the humans who he calls the zombies. Yeah. And, um, and so, but he does get kind of wrapped up into a, a young man who helps him out a bit, an, a, another musician who brings him, uh, I mean, Hiddleston will give him wads of money to bring him these choice, you know, uh, very rare, unique guitars mm-hmm. and things like this. So, but it's about, um, I don't know. It's about them living their more refined lifestyle yeah. as, as vampires. They don't they don't go out and suck blood anymore. They they buy their blood at uh, the hospital on the black you know through the black market, if you will. And um, and so they're living a refined lifestyle. They they want little to do with human interaction, if anything. Um, it, but their lives are disrupted by uh, Tilda Swinton's younger sister, who comes into town, and uh, she's reckless. And so that kind of disrupts their their current lifestyle, and so they have to deal with that. But there's there's interesting references, uh, comical references to uh, uh, Hiddleston writing music, Hiddleston's character writing music for Debussy or others, and mm-hmm. or um, uh, another character played by John Hurt, another vampire, you know, writing prose for Shakespeare. And and so there are some interesting plays on um, you know that history. Yeah. Um, but it's it's it, it's um, uh, how do I want to say? I mean, it it has a lot of trademark Jim Jarmusch style, where there's a quirkiness, there's a uh, um, kind of a deadpan maybe tone to certain parts of it, um, and it doesn't take itself super seriously yeah. in parts, which is kind of fun. Um, but I don't know. I, en- I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, I really enjoyed it as well. I mean, after a while, you just sort of forget that it is a vampire movie because it doesn't really right. lean on that stuff too much. I mean, it, it definitely sets itself up as that. I mean, they're both sort of sheltered away in their own little environments. And one thing I picked up on, even just from the opening shot, was that how patterns or even revolutions of their life sort of come around. So it's so you kind of right. learn that, you know, they were together at some point and then they decided to break off and do their own thing. And then, of course, now they're coming back together. Right. So it's just kind of like that record at the beginning of the movie where they're both just sort of in these circular patterns until something comes and sort of breaks them yeah. off of that sort of chain. And... um one thing I really liked about uh, Hiddleston's character was that he repurposes everything he gets. So it's like he has all this like technology, and so he'll like you know like whatever he did with that laptop and the television, he has yeah, like right. this like ten ten to fifteen year old laptop. And um, Tilda Swinton's character has like an iPhone, and so she wants to like face chat with him. Mm-hmm. And so he, he like pulls up the laptop, but he's not using the laptop; he's using the television with like a webcam. But it's like an old tube television from right. like the fifties <laughs> that he's talking to her on. And it just you know these two vastly different characters um, are just really entertaining in their their own ways. And like John said, they don't sort of go out at night and like like Hiddleston just like likes to drive around Detroit and like talk about how depressing like Detroit is now because all these different things were like these works of art and um you know he's it, as brooding as the characters are I never like was just bored by them or just no. sort of like go away like they're very interesting and sort of deep characters and there's a lot of humor just sort of these side jokes about um history and culture right. and sort of even, you know, pokes fun at certain um, vampire 
the things that you see in vampire movies, you know, like right. the Twilight movies and stuff like that. Not like too much, but yeah. just enough to sort of, you know, get a chuckle out of the audience. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I, th- I think um, maybe it's a, a tribute in a way to high culture and a critique of, yeah. you know, current trends uh, in, in some ways. Um, yeah, because there is a lot of reference to high culture and uh, philosophers and Tesla. I mean, I think... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Hiddleston's character being such a techie, you sure, know, yeah. is, you know, referencing, you know, Tesla and, and other, you know, innovators uh, in technology. And uh, it kind of has like a steampunk vibe to it, like what he does to technology. Like he just yeah. like he takes all this old stuff and new stuff and somehow figures out a way of making it way better, yeah. you know, and then to his own his own uses as the city of Detroit sort of crumbles around him. Yeah. He's able to sort of keep himself in, you know, like the he's able to keep the lights on and he's really strange and fascinating ways yeah um music i thought was also another big part of the movie that kind of uh keeps the emotional string uh, throughout the movie i thought that was uh, a really um a really fun you know part of the movie too yeah at times but definitely you know through his music you know being implemented in sort of the film it had there was like a theme i think yeah 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 so i mean there was other great music in the film but a a lot of it was driven by this this music that tom hiddleston's character was creating which is actually most of it was created by jim jermush and his band squirrel so um great you know great sounds to the film as well but uh no, it's 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 a cool film i mean i i will play it at the uh, iu cinema certainly um but uh, yeah it has a uh, i don't know it has a great feeling to it i think um yeah and you know it just like the other thing that I was, I thought was very, very entertaining is like, you know, of course they're vampires, but they're always wearing sunglasses at night. Right. You know, it's just like, that's how cool and hip they are. You yeah. know, they just, that's just what they do. And they go out to the, like, you know, this bar and watch this like local band play and, yeah. you know, they critique that. And uh, it's just, yeah, there is like, it's, it's definitely sort of on its own path until, you know, uh, her sister comes around and right. kind of wrecks havoc a little bit. And then, where the, where the movie goes after that, I thought was 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 a lot of fun. Yeah, so. yeah, and and depressing, and all these other you know you you feel sure. all this gamut of emotion throughout the movie. But I was very entertained by it. I it was not what I was expecting whatsoever, but in a very good way. Yeah, I you know there are there have been so many vampire movies, but this is a pretty unique yeah. vampire movie. Mm-hmm. Definitely, right. a place for film is recorded at WFIU Studios in Bloomington, Indiana.